previous night and yeah. the referee just botched and I'm not sure I'm getting paid, but yeah. ah, the show goes on and you know what I mean? There's yeah. a ton. There's a ton. Plus taking that first bump. Like take that first bump. Yeah. Hell just taking the first step to chase this weird dream right. is a weird thing. Hey, what do you want to do? I want to go into warehouses and gymnasiums until one day and somebody might me. notice me <laughs> by falling down and getting the crap kicked out of me by guys who are well bigger than right. me. Just way bigger than me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, calm. I'm calm. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so if people have never seen you wrestle, which is their fault, uh, basically, um, what three matches would you recommend? Okay, to watch? first off, my favorite match ever. It's on YouTube. Me versus Green Ant. Ah. It's the best match ever. If I could describe my career, that's the one. Okay. After that, I did a string of matches when I was a bit younger. I want to say like 20... 13, 2014, with ACH. Oh. Albert was... Where is he now? He, uh, I think he had some issues, and he okay. stepped away. Makes sense. But he was always one of those guys I was always envious of how just good yes. and just casually charismatic they were. He's and fluid just, with everything. Just, and he was a thick boy for doing all the things oh he was doing. Oh, my God. He was the heaviest cruiserweight I ever had to catch on a dive. One day he hit me, and I was like, what are you doing in this division? What the fuck? Um, I had some exceptional mas- matches with him. And another thing that I've really enjoyed doing is I'm getting older, and I like to do the character work. Because, yeah. obviously, if you see a 450 from me, I mean, call my wife. I think I'm on drugs. <laughs> Not but, the good thing. Right. Uh, but like I like doing the character work, so I I, re- I stopped. But I was doing the Monster Hunter yes. stuff, and I got to actually perform and, and improv a lot with these exceptional characters and, and, and people. Right. Like I get to work with Boogeyman and this guy and Gangrel and do all this kind yeah. of stuff, and I'm just having a little fun doing promos. I get to do a spot where Alex Shelley dies, and I got to do CPR. <laughs> you don't see that in anyone else's match. But like people are like, this is great because I've created a small little universe for my guy where it's okay. And like I had so much fun finding a way to do that, right. like finding a way to do that to where this is the cutesy little comedy segment of the night, and then I can go and wrestle uh, Keith Lee and Sir Strickland with Rich Swan the next night or the next month. I yeah. mean. Uh, and it's like this is great. I love this. I get to have these fun matches with these great guys, and they get to chop me, and I get to do a death spot. <laughs> like used to, they have to throw me in the air forty times, and they take a bump before a fan would just kind of gently clap. Right. Like, all right, kid, good job. <laughs> oh, that's what we gotta do. We gotta, we gotta work the crowd. Oh, okay, this is smart. Yeah, those. I would say, yeah, I would say those first two with Albert, and then, uh, and then my early days, and then I would say. My match with, I had a match with Larry D at Revolver years ago, because I, I was their first champion, Okay. and we were about to drop the title to Larry, and I was doing the heel run leading up to it, but I got real sick, and I told Sammy, I was like, hey man, I, I don't know, first of all, wrestling wise, I don't know exactly what I can do in this match. Right. After that, uh, friendship wise, we need to have a conversation, because I am actually really sick. Right. Uh, and I had a match with him, and I got over a body slam. I was so happy that I got to do my own little Hogan Andre moment that I was the heel, and I was able mid match to turn baby face and then give this guy a body slam. And the crowd, I, I remember this is to, to this day, hundreds of people just screaming at me, cover him, cover him. <laughs> and I'm leaning over at Larry going, on a fucking body slam, brother. <laughs> and I have to leg and he kicks out and he wins the match and stuff like that. And I say bye. Yeah. And I, I, of course, I got better. But it was like, it was a grueling like seven, eight months to get better. But that body slam brought me a level of joy that any superplex through glass right. or any pile driver through thumbtacks or any awesome title change it was just exceptional because I was able, this weird little theater kid that, that stumbled across <laughs> wrestling, I was able to get hundreds of people to cheer for me on a silly body slam. Yeah. And I was the bad guy 10 <laughs> minutes ago. And it worked perfectly. It was just beautiful. And he still got his shine. They didn't hate him. Yeah. They were just like, look at this pathetic little bastard doing his best. <laughs> it's just like, you know what I mean? So, yeah, I would say those. Those were a lot of fun. Those That's a good a, moment. I love that so much. So you kind of touched on it again with your character work, and we're seeing now in pro wrestling there is 
becoming more of a resurgent of the characters. Yes. Um, what do you kind of think the future is when it comes to the character work? Because obviously in the early 90s, we had characters, whether they be good or bad, uh, but they were characters, and then we became more of a reality-based uh, right, pro right. wrestling, and now we're getting back into, obviously we're seeing the Dan Housens, the Orange uh, yes. Cassidy's, and, every, and obviously the Monster, Monster Hunters. Yeah. What do you kind of uh, view the rest of the I think the era of the gimmicks may be turning against it again mm. uh, pretty soon, I think. I think COVID and how popular the cruiserweights in the Midwest were, I think having that refreshing change, but also a little bit nostalgic of having 90s right. gimmicks and stuff like that again. Guys like Bray Wyatt and Dan Housen yes. were a big part of being able to do that kind of stuff again. Uh, I think it was very refreshing, but I think it may be wearing off okay. again, uh, simply because just, just that's why I stopped. The vibe was just kind of feeling like, I think they want a bit more realism. Mm. It's hard to compete against professional sports and UFC and of WWE course. with the realism. And then be like, hey, folks, I'm over here to wrestle Joe Blow. He's a <laughs> private detective. You know what I mean? And be like, okay, well, I mean, you can do that to give like a little breather in a match. Right. But you can't do it. Like, if you have Dan House and me and then a whole bunch of, and then the ass boys from uh, the, the ASS, Alpha Sigma Sigma, yeah. and all these other guys doing comedy bits, and they're all gimmick-based bit of the same guy again isn't it right how are we getting how are we getting over if we're all doing the same moves sure and i think it's dying down i think a lot of guys like dan Housen, he's got it perfected that's oh, the guy who's that making a ton of money doing it and he knows how to do it orange cassidy same orange way. cassidy same way orange cassidy was a big inspiration probably more so than dan Housen for me because really? he was he was red ants yeah. at one point yeah, yeah. and i got to wrestle with him years and he was one of those guys like he's an exceptional wrestler yeah he can just do anything and then he decides to, like, I'm not going to do anything at all. I can do anything, and I'm going to do nothing. Yeah. And I'm going to make them love it. And he did. He and I was sure like, did. this genius. This genius. Yeah. And I was like, all right, I'm doing, I'm doing gimmicks. There I'm doing Monster Hunter. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, it was, it was, it's a blast. I think we're going to take a short hiatus um, from popularity for a bit on the indies. Yeah. Uh, maybe somebody will come in there and, and light a fire in all the gimmicks. But I think it's going to die off for a bit. And I think we're probably going to see it probably – the next five years again, get hyped up. That's my guess. Yeah. That's my yeah, guess. I mean, obviously we saw Dan Housen where he has the, obviously the very good, but he can be very evil. Yes. And then we're seeing Orange Cassidy now in black uh, <laughs> denim, which is, <laughs> we, is he becoming more evil? <laughs> yes, exactly. Isn't that, so. isn't, that, isn't that fun that a guy can just show up with a costume change yeah. and we're like, wait a minute. What's happening? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, wrestling. But also, like you said, he can do anything. If a guy is literally doing what he's doing with his hands in his pockets mm -hmm. he's obviously a good wrestler yeah. yeah i mean and you can just for instance you can the easiest thing is just look at the rock the guy yes. can uh, i tell my students that confidence is stillness and stillness is confidence mm -hmm. if you can stand half naked in spandex <laughs> and we can obviously see the outline of your genitalia in front of thousands mm -hmm. millions of people and just kind of look at them not move a muscle and just raise your eyebrow and make millions of dollars done that's the whole point uh, yeah i'm not out here to do a fucking marathon yeah <laughs> <laughs> so you know what i mean it's like it's it's wonderful that's the that's the way wrestling is right. is that people love it if you're good at whatever it is they will be receptive to yes. it anyway no you're <laughs> right now i have a segment on the show i call it the five counts it's okay. five random questions uh number one what are three things people would not expect about you uh, I didn't have floors in my home. Wow. I didn't have my own bed until I was 15. I slept on my own couch, uh, which did not have cushions. Uh, my dad is a tattoo artist and a 1950s car customizer, so I grew up in a very sheltered, probably kind of weirdly sheltered uh, life hmm. where I didn't really get to hang out with other children because uh, of just adults yeah just other family members and so i grew up in a 1950s car club wow i yeah i have a 1950 ford shoebox coupe that's been chopped and ready to go with a 350 chevy engine in the car forever i got an oldsmobile dash uh no, sorry cadillac dash set up in the uh that i customized and put in the front i got an oldsmobile uh, uh grill and i've been doing that since i was a little kid wow um that's kind of what I do. 
Uh, I'm not even a fan of cars. <laughs> I hate them, to tell you the God's honest truth. But that's that's what I grew up around with my dad. And the car club was the Lucky 13s at the time. They mm. ended up selling it to the clothing brand and making some good money. Oh. And then my dad is now a beatnik. It's a, some nationwide uh, artist club with yeah. guys like James Hatfield and all these other guys and stuff like that. So that's I grew awesome. up around these tattoo artists and car guys. And so... That's my life. It's like I, I, I have a very interesting and, and none of that stuff I mentioned about I didn't have floors and all that kind of stuff. It was some I was a country kid. I was out in the middle of nowhere. Oh. It wasn't like oh this poor kid. Right. It was like, no, no, that was we didn't have anything. It was like the beginning of Pumpkinhead. Right. It's like we're in the middle of nowhere in like this small shack and it was like fine. Right. That was just the way it was. And because the city hadn't come to us yet. Yeah. And then eventually, you know, the city came. We moved out. And we're like, holy shit, what's the internet? I'm 24 <laughs> years old. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, so like, Everybody yeah. has cell phones? What yeah. is this? Yeah. yeah. Like, I didn't have cable. Like, my wife is like, do you remember like, Nickelodeon? I was like, I didn't watch Nickelodeon, sweetheart. Yeah. But I know how about the Hero Honda uh, windshield that we have to hand mold and shape around the 1951 <laughs> Mercury. Stupid stuff like that, you know? Uh, and she'll laugh at that. It's like, oh, you didn't have a childhood. <laughs> but you get to catch up, so that's not good. Yeah, and like, and you know, and that's basically it. I play D and D, but anyone that can that knows that about me, I play chess, and I, I stick to myself. That's that's basically it about me. I wrestle. I work on old cars, and my wife makes fun of me. That's what I do. <laughs> I think that's most people's life, actually. <laughs> uh, if you owned a liquor company, brewery, winery, or coffee shop, which one would it be, and what would the name be? Oh. Ooh, that's interesting. Uh, whiskey business. Okay. I would be whiskey business simply because it's the first pun that came to my mind. But I also I prefer whiskey over the others. There we go. Uh, and I think I would just try to rip off Starbucks if I had a coffee one. I mean, just like go with the true indie wrestler mentality and yeah. just like straight just enough where I can't get sued. <laughs> <laughs> Bar stocks. That'd be a good one. Uh, what would your last meal be? Hmm. Last meal. Uh, so I think they're called Bert- Bertolli's, Bertelli's ravioli. Okay. Uh, when I was a kid, I remember my dad made me ravioli for the first time, and it was just simple, just Prego and Bertolli, yeah. you know, Kroger bought Throw ravioli. And, yeah. and still to this day, it's one of those things that I just kind of treat myself to a bit of nostalgia. And it's like, it's not, I never, I didn't have Chef Bogardi, uh growing up, but I had that. Uh, and yeah, it's probably that little, little cheap Texas toast, uh, garlic <laughs> bread and that, you know, that sweet tea and I'm, I'm good. Love it. Uh, who or what inspires you? My wife. I was telling a friend this and I don't think enough people understand. She's an incredible. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were living in a basement barely getting by wrestling week to week this is a girl who's had five tryouts sexually harassed the entire time stuck to her principles her morals wrestled for 10 years before one day she happened to just walk by Paige or Soraya and said girl give it another shot we're in the fucking basement still with black mold in our showers and she looks up in bed one day goes sweetheart I'm gonna try it one more time if I don't make it I'm, I'm done but I'll try one more time. I was like, okay, whatever you want. She gets there. She does her, she busts her ass. She does the O-Face, the diving stunner, the mm-hmm. eclipse uh, uh, later on, and gets the job. <laughs> after all that, after all that time, the guy whose basement we were living in invented the hold, invented mm-hmm. the diving stunner, taught her how to do it. Mm-hmm. They told her, we don't want you to do anything off the ropes. Sarah Del Rey, wonderful Sarah Del Rey, was there and she basically said go ahead I got you go ahead do it because they thought oh it's too dangerous right. and, and Sarah Del Rey is like you literally just bend over <laughs> she does all the work <laughs> you bend over she's taking the butt bump yeah, you, just, she, you she, just have to bend over and then fall back like a stunner yeah she's taking worse than anybody else yeah and so she did it mm-hmm. and then she took she took that job that paid twenty eight thirty thousand dollars a year went to a whole new state moved in with her friend Havoc, but a relative stranger in Callahan, just gets berated and shit on mm. constantly by, of course, the other people, because it's high school, life is just high school, True. Uh, of people there, fights through it, gets, a, gets the Achilles injury, 
Which, by the way, at one point, her Achilles tendon was in the doctor's hand outside of her body. Good lord. But no one talks about it. Right. That, that's the thing that Kobe Bryant miraculously came back from that. Hers was worse than his. And she worked on it torn for a few weeks, maybe in a little bit longer than that.